Those wonderful close-ups were part of a film, The Unknown Forest, which you may perhaps have seen on television. They were taken in the heart of the New Forest. Uh, in fact, the badger ones were taken at this very spot here, at this badger set in front of us. And they were taken by Eric Ashby, who's sitting beside me here. And Eric, of course, it's high summer now, and the bracken's high, but I imagine that for filming badgers, you have to work mostly earlier in the season when the bracken isn't so high. Yes, you're quite right. It's, it's much easier uh, for, uh, filming early in the season. You'll be surprised how different it looks before the bracken comes out. Mm -hmm. And um, it's best to start, well, I find it best to start filming in, in, in April, just when the cubs are, are coming above ground. Yes, I see. One of the features of a badger set is, is the piles which the badgers make to and fro, and, and these can be easily seen early in the year. As a rule, on their journeys from hole to hole, and, and when they leave the set, they take the path that has been worn by, by the same journeys throughout the winter. Yes, and of course, there's another thing which often shows up clearly, and incidentally shows that the set's being used, and that's their special lavatory, which is usually a short distance away from the set. And if there are little bundles of dry grass or bracken lying around, then perhaps this would have been happening the night before, the gathering of bedding. It depends on the situation of the set, what kind of bedding is collected, and if there's plenty of bracken or leaves or grass, then those particular materials would be the stuff used for the bedding. In this particular case, it's mainly a bracken and the dead oak leaves. If it's a dry night, then there's a very good chance that they may collect a bundle or two of, of bedding. But uh, it's nearly always done after dark. Hmm. So we're really very lucky to see this at all. This particular sour badger, you'll notice, has a, a twisted tail. I suppose it must have had an accident sometime. And, uh, you can uh, see it particularly well as it runs away. Hmm. I wonder how it got twisted. As a rule, at the end of April, the young badgers emerge after dark, or at least when it's too dark for filming. But uh, if, if one is very lucky and chooses the right set and takes every other precaution, it, it may be possible to, uh, to film them at this age. And uh, at this age, when, when they're so very young, it's possible to watch them without any height at all, just standing in full view, which is rather remarkable. But um, in a few days, they begin to get alert, and um, this couldn't be done at all. Hmm. This shot was actually taken by myself, and in, in this case I had the camera fixed to a tree behind me. Isn't that extraordinary? In this case the sow um, hasn't come out. But in, the, I think, the greater majority of cases, the sow is out first. Yes, I see. At this age, the badger cub will come up to your feet without realizing it. But uh, as soon as it, of course, smells your feet, away it will go. Yes, of course. Well, this one certainly didn't seem to smell you. But then it's, it's pretty intent on, on finding something to eat, isn't it? Of course, badgers are more or less omnivorous. Uh, that's to say, they eat practically anything that comes along. And they even dig up insects, too, don't they? Yes. As the cubs are feeding, uh, the impression that I get is, is that they find the insects mainly for smell. But on, on the other hand, they, they seem to be listening half the time as they snuffle around. And uh, therefore, I, I think it's a combination of smell and hearing. Hmm. Mm. Ah, now here's our first adult badger. The sows come out to join her cubs. And now, of course, you've got to be extra careful that you aren't detected, haven't you? Because she's a much more wary animal. Well, I must tell you that I've spent two days here in the New Forest with Eric, being shown his special places where he's filmed uh, 
fallow deer and foxes and such rare things as dartford warblers and so on. And, oh, we've seen more marvellous things in these two days, and we've talked a great deal too. And, of course, don't forget that every single animal that you've seen in this programme is completely and absolutely wild.